Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So, in today's video, as you can see, we are in a little bit of a different setting. We are currently in my kitchen slash dining room area, and we are going to be trying something a little bit fun today. So, if you guys watched me celebrating my dog Jackal, his 11th birthday, I attempted to do something in that video that turned out to be an epic fail. We're gonna try to redeem ourselves today with this video. If you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, in that birthday vlog with my dog, I attempted to make a cast of his paw. I wanted to have a little keepsake of his front paws so I could have something to treasure and cherish forever. I have always loved my dog's feet. I think they are just adorable. Well, the first kit that I tried was an absolute fail, and it sucked, and it didn't turn out at all. Guess what we're going to be doing today? That's all right, you guys. Today, we are going to be attempting to make another cast of my dog's foot, but this time we are going to be trying the Luna Bean Instant Plaster Casting Kit. Now, I know a lot of you are going to be like, but Brie, it says Infant Plaster Kit. Jackal, my dog, is not an infant human. You are correct. Excellent observation there. However, this is okay to use for dogs, all right? I've already done research on it. It's totally fine. It's not like my dog's hand is going to permanently be inside stone. Hey, okay, it's totally fine. It'll be fine. It's a very quick process. I, I literally only need him for this process for less than five minutes, and then he's free to go, and I do the rest. So we are going to be trying this kit today. I did get this off of Amazon. It was about $22.00 and I have a lot of hope for it. So basically what it comes with is it comes with very detailed directions on what to do, which I appreciate. It also comes with powders that are properly labeled with step one and step two. Like, blast, because the last casting kit that I tried, they completely mislabeled the powders and I was using the wrong ones and it was just a whole ass disaster. And it also comes with this little kit right here. So inside you get a mixing spoon so you don't have to use one of your own spoons. It comes with a paintbrush, which we'll talk about in a second. It comes with one of these things, I call them tongue depressors, you know when you go to the doctor and they're like, uh, you know that. I had some cake with some green frosting, that's why my tongue is green. It comes with some sandpaper, a little thing of sandpaper right here. It comes with a safety pin, I don't know what that is for yet. And it also comes with this wooden dowel looking thing. But that's not all you guys, it also comes with the finishing paint. They have many different paints that you can choose from, from Luna Bean, you can get silver, gold, shiny, or matte. I decided to go with the matte paint, so we have some of that. And it even comes with its very own Tupperware, so you don't have to use one of your own bowls. So as you can see, $22 for all of this, to have a cute little keepsake of my dog's foot winning already. So that is what we are going to be attempting today. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we do this right. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I can read directions. That would be chef's kiss. So if you guys want to follow along and you want to see me make a cast of my dog's two front paws, then let's go ahead and get started. So obviously, like I said, it does come with its very own Tupperware. They said you can use the Tupperware if you're going to be doing a foot, but because I'm going to be doing a dog foot, like a dog paw, I am going to be using just an empty Solo cup. That way I can get his paw in there and I don't have to worry about it touching the bottom or anything. So I am gonna be using a Solo cup. And it also says that if you are going to be doing a hand mold, to use a cup rather than the Tupperware. The Tupperware is more suited for like baby feet. Okay, so let's read, shall we? It says, step number one, making the mold. It says, use one bag per casting. So as you can see, we have two bags right here and we're only going to be using one of them per foot. We are just gonna try the one foot right now and if it goes well, I will try the second foot. But measure out exactly two cups of water and pour into the molding container, AKA my cup. Step number one, we're going to take two cups of water. I'm just gonna do like warm, maybe a little warmer than warm water, two cups in this cup. Let's go. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see that, but two cups literally filled up the Solo cup almost perfectly. So, okay, what's next? Empty one bag of molding powder into the water. Mix slowly at first 
until most of the powder is mixed in and then mix quickly and thoroughly. Scrape the bottom and the sides of the container frequently. The material will usually remain a little lumpy. So we are going to take step number one and we're going to pour it into this water. It's very, very full. I'm a little scared about this part. I'm, eh, I'm kind of scared. Fuck. I'm nervous. I'm too nervous. I'm too nervous. Abandon ship. Okay, we're doing the Tupperware. Then next we are going to take our little mixing spoon and we are going to mix the powder. I'm really glad they told me that it was going to remain lumpy because this is lumpy as fuck. And then it says about two to three minutes of mixing, the material will lose some of its color. And that's when you know it is time to insert your baby or dog's hand, paw. Okay, now we're going to take my dog. Oh no. I waited too long to put his foot in. It's already set. Ah! Let's try this again. Okay, this time we're going to use a much bigger cup. We are not going to wait as long. <laughs> I think I mixed it too much. I think, I think what it says is that once the material has lost some of its color, not all of its color, so once it gets kind of like more liquidy, then I put his paw in. So we're gonna try this again. So from the top, two cups of water in this cup. That's better. Step one, into here. Wow, this is messy. Okay, we're just gonna mix, 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 mix. And then once I start to see that purple go away, that is when we are going to put my dog's foot in. All right, here we go. He was in there for a little less than five minutes. Everything is rinsing off just fine. It just rinses off with water. He was a very good boy. He sat here the whole five minutes. I think you guys, I think we might actually have a successful time with this one. Good boy. That's a good boy. Yeah, you get a treat. There you go. Well, here, here's another one. Good boy. Here is what it looks like. I think we got it deep enough in there. And now it is time for step numero dos. Pouring the casting stone. Use one bag per casting. First, drain any excess water from the mold. I did that. Then add a half a cup of cold distilled or softened water to a disposable or glass mixing bowl. All right, so I need a bowl. If any of you are wondering if I'm having fun doing this, the answer to your question is no. This is actually incredibly stressful. Like, I feel like I don't have all of the proper, like, utensils to use in the kitchen. It is very, very messy. <sighs> I'm stressing. Half a cup right here into the bowl. Then pour the remainder of the bag of casting stone into the bowl. Okay. Take step number two, which is the casting stone. I'm gonna cut this open and I'm going to set aside one teaspoon, like it says, for repairs. I'm gonna pour the rest of the casting stone into the water. And then mix until it begins to thicken slightly, three to four minutes. Once blended, begin to pour immediately. You will have around five to six minutes of liquid state left to get the stone poured. Does that look appetizing or what? But do you guys see like how messy this is? It's like it's all over my floor. It's just, this is not a good time. If this doesn't work, I'm just gonna give up and not ever do this again. So now we are going to very carefully pour the stone.
No. What the? This is not a good time. We're going to do this instead. Okay, well this has been an absolute fucking mess as you can see, but we got the stone, casting stone right in there, right in his foot. I'm pretty sure we got it all the way down in there. So now we have to wait two hours for it to set and then we can peel everything away. Like I said, I did not think about the fact that I have to get this rubbery stuff out of this container. So I'm a little nervous for that part. And this is also my boyfriend's cup. So hopefully he forgives me uh, for using it. I am making him dinner tonight. So maybe that'll make up for the fact. Literally nothing about this was fun. All of the, the whole entire process was stressful. The only part that wasn't stressful was holding my dog's foot in there. And that should have been the most stressful part. I am going to clean this up and um, we will be back in a jiff. Ta-da! All nice and clean. We have everything sitting right here. So it is about six o'clock. So once that six is on the eight, we will come in and check on this. Hopefully it is ready by then. Unfortunately, I could not do both feet because I messed up the first time and I don't have any more molding powders. Allow your statue to harden inside the mold for one to two hours but best not to leave it in for more than four hours. And then step three, the final step, is finishing the statue, so getting it out of the mold and all that stuff. I hope I added enough in there. Hopefully it is all inside the little toes and whatnot. Uh, yeah, we will just have to wait and see. But I am sweating, I am stressed. I am gonna get off here for two hours. Three hours later. So at around nine o'clock, it was time to decast the very first paw print. And the first struggle that I had with this right off the bat was trying to release the suction that the rubbery molding powder had on the cup. That's why you will see in round two of this, I did use a very different cup because this one was just too hard. So I couldn't actually like move it, move the cup or squeeze the cup at all to release the suction if that makes sense but this took me a good like five minutes to get out it was very scary i was so afraid i was going to crack the actual stone while trying to release it and as you can see here once i did finally get it released it just kind of fell out and i was freaking out because i thought i might have damaged the actual sculpture uh, so that was a little scary. So once you do get it out of the cup, it is time to slowly but surely cut away at the rubbery bits. Very carefully, make sure you are conscious of where the stone is, and after a while, you will start to see little bits of it, like there's a little toenail right there, and the more you peel, the more it reveals. And it's seriously the most exciting thing in the whole entire world. Oh my god, it worked! Ah! Oh, how precious! <laughs> Some of his hair. This makes it more realistic. Yeah. <laughs> Get you for your cheers, buddy. Yeah, that's your foot! So once you do get the stone out of the rubbery bits and you admire it for a good 10 minutes, now it is time to do some of the hard work, which is where you're going to be using all of the tools that we were given in the beginning. And you're basically just gonna start picking away at it, uh, getting rid of some of the rubbery bits that might've stuck on there, kind of sanding away at parts that aren't supposed to be there, making sure that the little digits and the nails are fully exposed and all that stuff. Now you still have to be very careful because you don't want to break anything. And what's really cute is I actually noticed some of his hair <laughs> transferred onto the snow, snow, onto the stone as well. It was pretty crazy and I thought that was actually kind of cute. So once you do all of the sculpting and whatnot, you rinse it under some cold water and let it dry for about five days. And here's what it looked like the next day. It is the next day and as you can see the paw print actually worked. It came out so cute. It came out way better than I thought it was going to. 
I really wasn't sure how it was gonna work, but it worked so well and it looks so cute, so lifelike. It even has like all of his little wrinkles and just everything. This is so perfect. The next things that we have to do is we basically just have to let this dry and let it sit for five days, I think it said, and then we can paint over it with that little sealant stuff that it came with. So I'm gonna set this aside for five days, paint it, and I will show you guys the finished product. So freaking cute. Oh my God, I'm obsessed. Round two. Today, tonight, it is a few days later. It's 7.30 at night and it is pissing down with rain right now so it is very dark so this is not exactly the most quality content I've ever done but we are going to be doing round two I did order another replacement kit for the step one and the step two of the casting print as you guys saw the first one turned out beautifully amazing cute adorable I love it but I want to do his other foot now so I went on to Amazon and they actually sell the Luna Bean replacement powders so that's what we're gonna be doing today. I have everything out, I'm much more prepared this time. First things first, we have a plastic cup that is very large, so that way we can break the mold out a lot easier. Pour two cups of warm water into the cup. Slowly mix and it is going to turn a purple color, just like the first time. And once it starts to lose some of that purple color is when we will stick my dog's other paw in. After the five minutes is up, always make sure to reward your furry friend. Good boy, you were so good. Here you go, there's another one. Good boy, you did so good. And reward the other doggo just for being a good girl. Half a cup of cold water. We are going to pour the rest of step two into that cold water. And you are going to stir a little bit the casting stone and the cold water together until it starts to thicken. Then you are going to pour the stone into the mold Okay, and once you do that, it should look like that, and you're going to let it sit there and harden for about one to two hours. Even though the first time I did this, it was about three hours before it was ready. So we are going to come back in three hours and reveal the second little paw. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Three hours later. Hello, hi. It has been three hours since we have done the stone casting. Here's what it is looking like now. It is pretty much set and ready to go. It's been exactly three hours. It is uh, almost 11 o'clock at night. Why do I always do these things so freaking late? Also, I'm in the process of removing my nails. Uh, it's just, they've been on for over a week now. It's time to decast this other paw. Basically, you wanna, oh, okay. I hope I didn't just break it. Okay, that was a lot easier this time around. So here is the rubbery bit, and basically, you just want to kind of peel it off. I'm going to use just a butter knife to kind of start cutting this. Oh, so satisfying. Oh, I see two little nails right there. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, we have another little pawn. Oh. oh my gosh, you guys, there it is. Here it is, you guys. There is the other paw print. Holy guacamole, I can't believe it. We did it. Next step is we have all of our little supplies here. We have the sandpaper again, the safety pin, and then this little dowel. And you're basically just gonna like go in here and just remove anything 
else that is kind of soft or not supposed to be there. <gasps> no! I accidentally broke off one of his little nails. <sighs> okay, we're gonna save that and we'll just super glue it back on. So here are what both paws look like next to each other. I did super, oop. I did super glue his nail back on, so I'm gonna let that dry overnight. And then once we paint both of these, once they're like fully set and everything, I don't think you'll be able to tell too much, but they turned out so cute. I am so incredibly happy with them. So this is the first one that we did, and this is the one that I just unveiled, you know, un uncasted. Once they are fully set and dried and everything, we will paint them, and I do wanna mount them on something, like a little plaque or something, and maybe like paint his name or something like that, but that is what we're looking like, and we will see how they look in a few days once they are fully set. So now that everything has fully dried and fully set, it is time to paint. So as I told you guys in the beginning, I did go with the matte paint and I'm gonna be using that with the little paintbrush that it came with. I don't honestly know what this part is for or why you need to do this. It was very fun to do. I just went over the entire paw cast, both of them with about two coats of the paint and they did dry fairly quickly. And I noticed that once they did dry, they almost looked a little bit shiny and they almost feel more lightweight now that they're fully dry. It's very interesting. I don't really know how to describe it. So I just made sure I got all the little nails in between each digit, the little pads, like it, it's so cute. Like I was literally painting my dog's foot. Like it doesn't get any freaking cuter than that. So after you successfully paint both paws front, back, side to side in between each little crevice and you let that dry for a few days, here is what they looked like all finished up. Now I don't know if you can see on camera, but they do look a little bit shiny, but honestly they turned out so cute. Are they absolutely perfect? No. Like I don't think I could ever get them perfect. but. I know what they are, I know whose paws these are, and my heart is just so happy with this. I love how it turned out. You guys will have to let me know down below what you thought of this. Do you like it? Would you do this for your pet? Make sure you go down and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe if you are new to my channel. But other than that, I will see you all very soon in my next video. Bye guys!